The Justice and Peace Commission of Caritas Freetown expressed concern over a rise in crime and violence in Sierra Leone as the country approaches general elections slated for June this year. Programs Manager of Caritas Freetown, Elisa Silla, said that Sierra Leone security is fragile, noting that people were aggrieved and seemingly waiting for an opportunity to be violent. Based on how people react violently to any simple provocation, you can tell that the levels of depression and trauma are high and people seem to be waiting for the slightest aggravation to become violent. This is not a good thing for a country heading to elections. People appear to have so many bottled up grievances. Many people look so agitated and they are aggrieved by their poor living conditions. They are not happy with the way the government is giving people jobs on competitive process. Our security is very fragile. Crime is on the rise. The other day we received reports of people who had been found wounded in the provinces. We want to think it's an act of robbery, but we're also worried about the deteriorating security in the country, Elisa said. Now, on August 10th of 2022, hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Freetown and some parts of the north, protesting against inflation and the rising cost of living, according to some of the protesters. The protests grew violent at times. Graphic images and video of battered and seriously injured protesters, including dead security personnel and members of the public, were seen on social media. Security forces were also seen firing guns at citizens. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Julia Jallo declared a nationwide curfew on the Wednesday at 3 p.m. local time while President Julius Madabi was out of the country. Now, the impartiality of the Salem police is once again being called into question um, with a recent report from Amnesty International European Union and the United States Embassy. Tonight, we're taking a look at the state of security in Sierra Leone. 2023 elections, peace and violence. My name is Samuel Weisbangru and this is AYV on Sunday. All right, good evening and a very warm welcome to AYV on Sunday. Today we are gauging the state of security in Sierra Leone ahead of the 2023 elections. Um, peace and violence. You can also follow us on DSTV channel 399 on Radio FM 101.7 and on local channel channel um, 33. You also have the opportunity to be part of the conversation. Move over to our AYV News Facebook page. Drop your comments, drop your questions. We would always find time to go through some of them. But as always, we solicit your views. But please, please, and please, tailor them to the issues being discussed. No personality attack. No um, comments that would provoke um, violence. So please, just tailor them to the issues being discussed and contribute meaningfully to making the conversation a very civil one. Yeah, with me as always, I bring up a, a star studded panel of people who are in touch with the issues to have every shade of opinion on the topics we're always discussing here. From the Ministry of Information and Communication, I have um, one of the strategic communicators, um, Imran Sila. Good evening and welcome to the show, Imran. Thanks for having me. Good evening, Samuel. All right, I have the country director for Amnesty International, um, Solomon Subandi. Good evening and welcome to the show, Solomon. All right, I also have with me from the Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion, Philip Buna, who is the Director of Conflict Prevention. Philip, good evening and welcome to the show. All right, um, I'm going to start off with you, Solomon, for obvious reasons. Um, the Amnesty International just released a report, and um, that report is quite indicting of government efforts seven months after the August um, 10th protest. Um, but the, fi the findings are quite damning to the states, the security um, apparatus and all of that. So just, just paint us a brief um, picture of that very report and how did you arrive at the findings? We have been able to we are all aware of all those things. Hmm. What is called mm -hmm. in terms of violence. Uh, A team of researchers came to Sierra Leone together with the Amnesty staff mm -hmm. and we did an oral interview with a lot of persons, including uh, witnesses, relatives of deceased 
Entonces, son grupos de policías, civil society organizations, activists, etc., etc. Mm. It was really like an oral testimony. And when you read the report, it's all about alleged, alleged, but this is information gathered from people. And so we, we produced a press release on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we brought up some of the key issues, including especially the issue of uh, the role of the police. But again, before really coming to the, the real issue of the report, right. the fact that uh, I'm looking at the role of the media mm -hmm. in terms of how do they look at news. We expect the media to be very professional in the way they, they relate with the public in terms of news. Mm. We expect the media to analyze the news and to give a balanced and objective view to the public for them to understand. Mm -hmm. The media should not make the news. Unfortunately, in our case, we saw that uh, it was the media that was making the news, also, especially like the press. You know, we saw headlines that are a bit scary. One of the newspapers, mm. like uh, the, the forum newspaper, had a caption, Amnesty rubbishes to your own government, human rights records. To me, I mean, that's, they have missed the point. Mm. Critical issues we are, we are, we are, we are, we are raising that, that report. So we are expecting the media to look at all of these people. Mark you, six police officers mm -hmm. we are killed. The nature in which they are killed is a cause for concern. Right. And up to 27 protesters were equally killed. What, what led to that? Okay, we look at even the role of the police. What's the relationship between the citizens and the police? Matthew, mm. I was in this country when we had the civil war. And I was involved. I'm sharing this testimony because Quiet. I saw how police officers were targeted by the rebels. They were are brutally killed. On August 10th, again, we saw how some of the protesters attacked the police and how some of them were brutally killed. What message are we learn from that in terms of the relationship between citizens and the police? Mm -hmm. And I was not, I'm not staying in the Eastern part of the, of the country, I'm staying here at the police. But colleagues and friends who are staying in the Eastern part, who saw what I could say. Why is the cities we are? I'm afraid I have to hold you that I think we're having a little um, glitch with your microphone. Let's allow the technician fix it and then we'll allow you to continue your submission. Um, Solomon, let's quickly take this break and uh, the technician will get that sorted. Welcome back. We apologize for that um, technical glitch. Um, I still have with me in the studio Philip Bona from the Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion, Solomon Sogbandi from Amnesty International, and Imran Sila from the Ministry of Information and Communication. Um, Solomon, forgive me. Um, you were making a submission um, about the August 10 and the reports you've published. And f first off, just before you continue, when you say the media is not helping to, to shape the conversation and allow people or, or, or give context to some of these things, rather... Um, We've seen over time where the media has played a crucial role and sometimes been blamed for some of atrocities committed in other countries, including Sierra Leone. Did the reports, did the reports speak, or would you love to really speak to, as we head to the June 24th polls, it's very crucial and critical for us as a nation, and it's very sensitive and a fra fragile period. What would you love to see? in terms of what role should the media play, just out of curiosity. Again, uh, you know, we want to see the media playing this traditional role in terms of displaying levels of professionalism, in terms of how they report, mm. and not to bring in personal considerations or some inclinations. Sensationalism in yeah, the print. <laughs> fine. Because, like the forum, the forum is paper. Mm -hmm. When you look at the caption and the rest of the information, nothing yeah. follows. They say amnesty rubbishes, mm -hmm. the government of Sri Lanka records, mm -hmm. human rights records. Mm -hmm. Fine, that's the caption. But you read what follows, mm -hmm. there is nothing there other than our press release. 
So, I mean, what is it? What are they putting across? Hmm. And it's not only, I mean, there are other newspapers equally having such a scary, I mean, uh, sensational uh, headlines. And so, I mean, we, this is a very serious issue we are raising in the, in, in the press release. Police officers were killed. Hmm. Citizens were killed. Mm -hmm. Properties were destroyed. We need to take the conversation very, very serious and mm -hmm. not to, to, to bring in sensational, sensational headlines. Mm -hmm. you know, so this is, and this is what really want the media to be, to, to be doing moving along, I mean, as we move into election, mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, they present an, unbal an unbalanced and analytical view in terms of the issue so that people or the public is able to understand the issues and be able to really take decisions in terms of the issues they raise and not to sensationalize some of these issues. That is why I really wanted to bring the issue up okay. in terms of, because the way they have presented the thing now, you know, and we, we, we saw the, the press release of the police. Mm -hmm. It's like the issue is not about really the issues raised in the press release. It's now between Amnesty International and the police. Right. So we have moved away from the key issues. Mark you, the August 10th is, is a sharp reminder of the of the of the of the of the, of the armed conflict we went through mm -hmm. because when you look at the way it was characterized the brutality the level of destruction that 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 characterized the august 10 it's a sharp reminder so the question is uh, have we learned any lesson how what went wrong mm. how can we discuss issues so that so as you say that whether or not we've la we, we've learned our lessons um let, let's go to some of the findings in, in, in you spoke of allegations of excessive use of force in freetown and mckinney uh, well, um, that of the police. So, so uh, w what are specifically the findings? What did people tell you when you spoke to, I mean, the relatives of deceased, as you mentioned, eyewitnesses and all of that? What were their testimonies? The testimonies were that they were shot. They were shot. Mm. I mean, they, according to them, the, their relatives died out of gunshot wounds. Again, <laughs> this is like an alleged testimony from the people. Because right. when we ask them, what evidence do you have to support that? They said the autopsy results done by the, the, the pathologists were never presented to them. Mm -hmm. So it was like <laughs> they were only assuming that uh, you know, the, 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 the relatives died out of gunshot wounds. So that's the, that's the story we carried. Well, well, putting it that way, would people be, 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 be safe to say, then um, would they be okay to question the, the facts of, of, of the reports of the press release? Because I'm looking at a situation where people are aggrieved and they would have to make all sort of ac accusations or allegations against um, the police that they were in conflict with at the time. So when were there other things taken into consideration outside the testimonies of just victims of, of, of um, f family members of, of the deceased, people who told you they were eyewitnesses, just their stories, especially when we know the political rhetorics around the August 10 election from both parties. This is the challenge Amnesty had. Mm. You know, and uh, until we have an independent investigation right. to support the allegations made, we'll continue to, to, to lean on those. Because we are happy that government set up the special Why are you committee. not supposed to conduct an independent investigation in this? Well, this is what we are saying. We, we, our investigation is just like asking questions, mm. you know, right. because when you interview anybody, the person is going to tell you what he or she saw mm -hmm. and perhaps personal issues in terms of what they, mm -hmm. they, they, they saw. So right. you, you, you have to, because when you ask them, I mean, what's the evidence? They say, we don't have, but we believe they were shot, they died by gunshot wounds. Mm -hmm. And to us, the evidence is really like an autopsy that can really, really be that indeed this person died of gunshot wounds because right. the evidence, the autopsy will, will, prov will provide that. Even the police, this was why even in the report we, re we raised the issue of investigation. Even with the police, but again in that press release they said they cannot mount a press release because the, 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 the special committee will do that. But even for their own records, how did the six police die? Is it out of gunshot wounds? Is it out of some other causes? If it's, it's from gunshot, who, who, who shot the police? If it's from civilians, how did they get the guns? Where are the guns? So that, that raises the alarm for him, the small arms committee, to mount up an investigation if they are saying that uh, the six police who died, died of gunshot. So what we are saying, mm -hmm. government needs to really do an in-depth investigation. And that's why we are happy that uh, the special committee, but again, we have challenge with the special committee. Which is? One, we are happy that it was set up. But to date, we don't know where we are in the, in, the, in the investigations. Have they completed 
have they, do they have a draft report? They should be relating with the public to know where we are in the investigation. And um, mark you, we are, we, are, we, are, we are a few months to elections, and we wanted to have the report, the recommendations, and how can we push government into action in terms of carrying out those recommendations. Mm -hmm. Let, 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 let me hear from um, um, Imran. Um, as you asked about the report, I was gladly informed um, by members of the committee that um, they, they've completed the investigation, they've submitted the report, and it's left with government and to publish um, the report. But, but Imran, you've listened. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you must have read the release put out by Amnesty International. And of course, the police already ha, um, had responded to a bit of it. Um, first off, what does government make of that statement by Amnesty International? So I have not, uh, thank you again for the opportunity, Samuel. I have not only read the report, I brought a copy of the report with me. Uh, there are two elements, well, three now, which are uh, based on uh, uh, the media involvement being raised. Mm. Uh, the first naturally has to be the 10th of August and mm -hmm. what actually happened mm -hmm. and the way in which uh, the amnesty report have captured it. Uh, second, which is germane to the first, mm -hmm. right, and that uh, it touches and concerns hum concern human rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, be because somehow, if you watch social media, uh, there's a spin to it, mm -hmm. which is our human rights record, hmm? mm -hmm. the re human rights record of this government forgetting all of what we probably have accomplished together with the House of Parliament, I have to add, mm. right? And that's bipartisan also. But then, uh, you know, we'll come to that in a minute. If you look at the report, Samuel, uh, it talks about people being interviewed, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, the first part was about someone being interviewed, a civilian. The second was another one being interviewed. The third was from a protester in McKinney, who was interviewed and his own account. And then if you go to the final page, it says background. On the 10th August 2022, protests broke out in Freetown. Hmm? Protests broke out in Freetown and other areas of the country amid mounting frustrations over the soaring cost of living. Mm -hmm. Some demonstrators called for President Bill to resign. Now, this I feel is very inaccurate. In very, sense? very inaccurate. In what sense? It, it, it's a sort of placated way of explaining what actually happened. Mm? Protest broke out in Freetown. Right. No. And it, it clearly distorts what the facts are. Samuel, we were all in Sierra Leone on the 10th of August. We know what happened. Mm? These protests largely emanated from APC stronghold in Makini, in Tonkolili in Putloko, hmm? Waterloo, in the east end of Freetown, not in the west end of Freetown, not in Bo, not in Pujong, not in Kailao, not in Moyamba, you know, not in Cambia even. So clearly, there was a political tilt to it. Had Amnesty International, well, the actors here, had they done their job diligently, that should have been captured in the background. No. Right, but they did not because have to, to have blamed the, pol uh, the, the, the opposition no, 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 party just, for no, 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 just, that? no, 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 just set the backdrop. Which, which, I mean, which because if the backdrop, a backdrop cannot just be three, four lines. A backdrop has to be more than three, four lines well, because mm. we well, where know exactly. To be in the, in, 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 well, ju just the state. It, it can't. It can't be. It could be anything, but not just in Freetown and other areas of the country because we know mm. that if what they were saying was cost of living. The cost of a bag of rice in Makeni is the same as the cost of rice in Bo. Hmm? The cost of a bag of rice in Kamakwe is the same as the cost of rice, a bag of rice in, in Kailao, the same in Moemba, the same in Kenema, you know, the same in Pujon. But the inhabitants of those places clearly did not take to the streets. Yeah? What we saw unfolded on the 10th of August is, is a mob action. Hmm? And what do they say about mobs? It's a place where people go to forget their conscience, Samuel. Mm? People took out, right, took to the streets on that day in those places. What, 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 I, what, what I would not want to do, um, th th there's a committee the government has set up already. That, 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 that report, that Let's, report yes, like you I want said, us to, yes, just no, no, cite, I'm, I'm, I'm I, simply talking, I mean, we're talking the now, report, it's about yeah. the report, right? And what I think is, mm -hmm. is, has been distorted, right? It is not factual at all, mm. number one. Second, my brother just mentioned 
amongst the many people they spoke to, right, I wish they could have spoken to the diseased police officers, the families of the diseased officers, and it should have been captured in the report, right, because it is not just about what happened. Yeah. I went to Kamakwe, Samuel, and it is also factual that the, fir that the first person to die on that day was the police officer in the east end of Gita. He was the first to lose his life. And that's on record. Mm. He was unarmed. He used to live at Dwazak Farm. I'm close to friends. I know friends who know the family very well and were very close to him. He was regarded as a pastor. Yeah? This was someone who, well, I don't know if he had a church, but that showed, shows how religious he was. And on that day, he did not, he, he, was, he was unarmed. Mm? Clearly just having a baton on him, trying to pacify the crowd. What happened? He was killed, right, by mobs, looking to overthrow a government, claiming it was because of cost of living. And to the officer in Kamakwe, we went to Kamakwe, I think, a week after the incident on the 10th of August. This young man, who was dragged through the streets of Kamakwe, was actually living in Kamakwe, not only because of his police assignment, but he was married in Makini, have kids in Makini, so there were three attempts to pacify the crowd, young people, not to go into action. Mm. And when that failed, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. When that failed, Samuel, right. all the police officers were warned to be on their guard and to keep themselves safe. He said distinctly, and I got this from the stakeholders in, 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 in Kamakwe, right? He said distinctly, look, Nami, Nami home this. This is home for me. Mm. I am not going anywhere. He went home to his wife and kids. He was dragged through the streets. So you didn't need, uh, it's not rocket science to get those information and get them contained in this report. So, My so, point so, is... So what, what, what I would want to, to, to get from you, mm. um, um, Solomon is there. Amnesty has gotten a reputation for putting out, I mean, and, and defending oh, uh, absolutely. human rights and all of absolutely. that. But saying that this report is not factual and um, the report is erroneous. It could, have been, it could have been a lot more than what we're seeing, Samuel, mm. right? And that cannot be disputed, number one. Second, mm -hmm. right, uh, I, I'm not blaming Amnesty International as an organization, mm -hmm. yeah? Because we know they have a reputation, right? We know, right, that they're respected across the world, mm -hmm. yeah? For the work that they have done and the work that they continue to do. Mm -hmm. But somehow, my sources tell me, because I spoke to a few people who were connected when the team came into Freetown to do their investigations and talk to people. Some of what was said to them, right, from my source, mm -hmm. was clearly dismissed. N definitely not, not captured. In this, definitely not captured in this report. Definitely. And so it raises so many questions than the ones it has attempted to answer, which is, mm. why was it not more thorough and detailed? I mean, uh, I have a son who's 20. I can get him to do a more detailed report than what we have, frankly. Im, Im, yeah? Im, just quickly, I can get them to do a more quickly, detailed I, report I, I than what we to, have to, now. To, to, to right? come it should be, it should be dispassionate, to right? And to, to, to the allegation or accusation of um, having an um, publish an erroneous and um, I'm just fact, it is not report. factual. It is not factual, Solomon. The, the point is the fact that uh, it depends on who you meet. Hmm. And that's the response you get. And Mark, you. But what Imran is saying mm. here is that he has his sources. He spoke to some of his sources, and clearly, some of the findings you did not publish. Like which ones? So, so it's a skew. So are you giving us a skewed report? No, but ask you you talk, which, which ones? Okay, so did you talk to the families of the police officers killed? No. So could you not not have done that? I mean, in the process of your investigation, could it not have been more thorough? The, the point right is, and extensive. The, the point is, mm -hmm. not not interviewing the relatives of police officers does not skew the report. Mm -hmm. A lot of other people, you, even like civil society activists, mm -hmm. credible civil society activists, mm -hmm. we cannot name them. And that's I, not here also. No, we cannot. Ah, we cannot name them. No, no, you could have. But inter you, you they were interviewed. Look, look, yes. And they gave you. That's what you are saying. Yeah, but, yes. Mm -hmm. No but names were mentioned. Even that's, in the report, no, in fact, even the civilians no, you spoke to. No, what, no names were mentioned. Is it, is it we cannot. No, we can't. We cannot. If so, I, if I, a, 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 a notable human rights activist name was mentioned in the initial draft, I said no, you cannot do that. So let us. You go are exposing. No, but you cannot. Security. Well, yes, you yes. cannot expose. Yes, you cannot expose because 
the point is about some of these issues is about the issue of confidentiality. Right. You know, in terms of your source. And in research, that's very, very critical. Yeah, but, but the contents could have been included in the report. So for every, look, go to the second paragraph. Your testimony of a father of a 22-year-old woman, mm. right? A father, right? No name was mentioned. No. You could have spoken to families of diseased police officers without mentioning their names. It, it, is, it is just routine. That is what you do. You don't mention names, mm -hmm. right? So why could it not have been more thorough and detailed, right? But not and factual. Uh, Imra, I, I, I cannot understand. For. I mean, just not not uh, 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 doing an interview with 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 relatives of police does not make the, the, the report to be skewed. No. Well, but this this wait. Are you are you are you in contention of what are the issues in the report that my, you are not my, you are in contention my, of? My, my problem is my problem is mm. when you give a back to up saying. Yeah, that protest broke out in Freetown and other parts. Yeah, uh, other parts we know, right? These are areas that where you have uh, 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 more opposition support. So, so you wanted the reports to to have actually no. validated your claim? Well, exactly. Um, no, validate of, themselves. So, have yeah. validated your the, claim? I mean, as a government saying that it is, fact, it is oh, not, it is the, not the, my the, claim. The, the, the protests were just from the opposition it, drum it, it, orchestrated by the APC, it was an insurrection. It is was for, that what you were looking for? It is for, for the report? sanctity of their own reports. Right? When you write a report, mm. it has to be balanced. Uh, uh, protests took place in opposition stronghold. Because that's what it is. That is what happened. Don't you have supporters in, don't you, don't you have supporters <laughs> in, in enough? Look, we, As a party. Samuel, Samuel, we know exactly what happened. This is... Let, let, us, uh, let us not be... Uh, 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 let us not pick our words. Mm. Yeah? We know exactly what happened, yeah, in, in Kamakwe, in Makini, in Putloko, and in the eastern part of Freetown. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For we, the we majority of Sierra Leone, including the western, the majority of Sierra Leone was peaceful and quiet. People went about their, 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 their daily business. And that has to be noted in the report. So granted, that what? you can call it a protest mm -hmm. against cost of living, but the cost of living in Makini is no different from the cost of living in Moemba. It is no different from the cost of living in Pujon. It is no different from the cost of living in Kailau. So how can it be considered a cost of living protest when, I mean, the same uh, uh, challenges that the people in Makini are facing are the same challenges being faced by those in Bo? Right? So does it make sense to anybody that this was, that this was a protest for cost of living? Would it mean, no. would it mean no. that, let's go back, when, say for example in McKinney on the uh, Viannis Bikroma led um, administration, that I mean government ministers would go to McKinney and uh, people would be given handouts and all of that, that cushions their, their sufferings which was never different from the, those in Bo and Kenema. And now that um, the ties have changed, the same? Uh, no, I, I, look, I, I don't think so. I think okay. it's, it's, it's down to bad politics, Samir. Right. Yeah, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, people have challenges on a daily basis. We all do. Even Imran, for those of us who are... Imran, you're my, <laughs> you're my friend. In the situation where I'm broke, I have access to, to Imran. Imran, Imran, I'm broke with you. Which is different from that. We have the same challenges, but I have a means of solving. Because I will call you Imran. You so you cannot you cannot limit your explanation to only those in the north right, right? people like people in the south and the east also have those same challenges right. and have no one to go to mm. right so they also would have had more than enough reason to come out on that day but they did not they did not because look uh, and those challenges did not go away the following day it is still there right this is something as a government that we have acknowledged and we have said yes we know that there are global so circumstances this report has been questioned it, 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 it is not only being questioned, yeah? It is not only being questioned somewhere. It has to be fair and balanced and more detailed, right? You cannot, I mean, you have seen the report, haven't you? Right? Look at the, the backdrop. But two and a half lines. But me, boy, picking self age 20 now. Gam, report for right and tell her for doing a backdrop. It could do, it could do 20, 20 lines. Let, 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 what? Let, let, two paragraphs. <laughs> I'm sure the commission was very much involved in um, the arrangement to um, restoring peace and sanity in those parts that were affected by the Augustine protest. Lives were lost and all of that. What does the commission make of the report? Uh, have you gone through the report? Is the commission okay with the report? Well, yes, I went through the right. report. Mm -hmm. um, well, to start with, thanks a lot You're for welcome. the invitation and. Um, 
to be part of this uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I personally know Amnesty International as a well-renowned, credible institution mm -hmm. uh, all over the world. Absolutely. And they've been doing an excellent job, right. um, especially in crisis areas or when it comes to human rights abuses. Mm -hmm. um, they have track record of, um, you know, really standing up with victims, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whose human rights have been abused. Mm -hmm. um, that said, um, getting that report in my hands with regard to the August 10 incident mm -hmm. and um, the content of it um, by means of uh, using a method of interviewing victims or uh, relatives of victims, um, my first impression was, I mean, I'm speaking here mm. as an individual, Quite. as Philip, mm. was that um, they could have added, uh, or they should have added some, some flesh to it. No doubt about it. Flesh in it, what sense? In the sense that um, I missed um, interviews presented here from other protagonists who also fell victim, mm -hmm. who would have been also equally uh, very important to capture in this report. That was actually what I thought. I said it, the content of it, the interview conducted definitely captures the victims or relatives of victims. One-sided, one-sided reports. Yes, but you should have uh, added, you know, some more information mm -hmm. to it. I think I got that one. Then another thing was, I think, the premise, mm -hmm. you know, uh, was not well, you know, highlighted why this report at this point in time mm. now that we know there is a committee which has been set by his excellency the president mm -hmm. and is investigating the matter um, and we are having um, such a report where you actually don't know the premise which has not been well highlighted mm -hmm. as to why this interview was conducted um, I mean I captured um, you know, in the introductory part of it, you know, uh, the reasons why the August 10, you know, mm -hmm. incident took place, you know, poverty, marginalization, and so on and so forth. But um, it was not really like I would see this as a premise, you know, to have such an interview based on this one-sided approach. Um, just like uh, Mr. Sila said, yeah it would have been better, you know, or advisable to conduct a broad-based and carpet interview of lots of um, individuals who were affected, um, starting from Kama, uh, Kamakwe mm -hmm. and even beyond Kamakwe, even down to the areas which were not directly affected, um, to get a, a, a clear picture, a broader picture of um, whether the assertion that mm -hmm. poverty, marginalization, and uh, so many other uh, things raised there, are we are the real root, root causes of the August 10 um, mm. incident. Mm. You know, the Amnesty International is not the only institution that has raised concerns over the August 10 elections. Mm. Of course, if you go to the EU report, mm. the um, State of Human Rights report published by the United States Airbus, you would see there are also concerns raised from those institutions, those bodies, and these are credible bodies. So, if um, the state is discrediting the report from Amnesty International, saying it's it's one-sided, and um, yeah. and Solomon mentioned that uh, they only spoke to eyewitnesses and um, relatives of um, um, deceased and um, and government personnel and government well government personnel and civil society activists. Right. So. It means that the concerns are just the same. Mm -hmm. So, as, as a commission now responsible, that permanent infrastructure responsible for consolidating our peace, what should we focus on? Seven months after the August 10 um, crisis, government instituted a, com a committee. The committee, I have, I mean, will, um, credible information that they've completed, the committee has completed. 
it's work and submitted reports to government, just waiting for government to do the publication and then findings would be, uh, uh, um, would be discussed. What do you think should we focus on now? I'm looking at how fluid the situation can get and how fragile the state is ahead of the June pools. We have about 91 or 90 days it to is, yeah. the, the, the pools. Yeah. Well, anyway, to get back to your previous question, mm. uh, I'm, I mean, here in no way discrediting the efforts of Abnetti International in regard to the report uh, you know, published. Uh, definitely the content of it and the methodology applied there is unquestionable. I just thought yeah. they could have, you know, done some more, you know, to have a comprehensive uh, report. Yes. To this so yes. they stop the peace and tranquility. Yes. So what does the commission do? Like I mentioned, we've, we've had allegations, we've seen videos, we've seen um, them being circulated all over social media. Mm -hmm. But they are the ones starting or fanning the flames using tribal cards, you now yeah. religious cards on the table, regional cards and all of that. So mm -hmm. how do we diffuse? It's a that? very a critical question and very important one. Mm -hmm. When an individual really does not want to have peace from within, mm -hmm. you, you can do whatever you want to do, he or she will never have it. Mm -hmm. But from the point of view of the commission, you mm -hmm. know, we've done district stakeholder engagement in almost all the districts mm -hmm. across the country. You know, right into Kamakuya, where I was the, I mean, which, uh, where I was a witness uh, mm -hmm. personally, right. you know, the destruction that took place there. Mm -hmm. So all what we try to do here is still continue sending the peace messages, mm. you know, through, uh, you know, jingles, just like AYV is doing, mm. you know, if people take it or they don't take it, mm. you know, we definitely know you have bad apples in each society. I mean, it's not only Sierra Leone. Mm. I mean, w when we read some of these reports, it's, it seems as if it's only in Sierra Leone we are having such difficulties. No, even in Europe, you also have, when it comes to political, uh, uh, campaign, mm. right? There is no political cohesion there mm. until the winner comes out, even in the United States. So, I mean, Nigeria had their own recently. So, what we are trying to do as a commission, we continue encouraging them, we continue, uh, you know, sensitizing the stakeholders, and also even committing, at, uh, and we continue encouraging politicians to commit themselves to peace. Like, if we have such an event, it will all round, uh, round up, uh, boil down to committee, you know, signing that they really, you mm -hmm. know, are ready, you know, to conduct, you know, to, to, to really run those elections without, for example, uh, instrumentalizing those boys who in, in, in one way or the other, you know, see this as an opportunity to get money, you know, when politicians throw money at them. But we, actually, these boys, personally, they are peaceful. I mean, Running through uh, uh, Lumbly, where I usually drive to go to work, mm -hmm. I will see all those big posters from the various politicians. And those boys will stand there wiping them, you know, cleaning them. But you never see them have any clash. You never see them have any dispute. But rather, they will just continue asking for, you know, some amount of money, right? So it's also a way of making money. So the politicians know that. And then they will use these boys give them money, and this money definitely has been misused by taking drugs or whatever, especially when the euphoria is so high during elections. So what we are doing, we still embark on really seriously propagating the messages. Mm. We develop new messages. Every week new messages come, you know, and also uh, in collaboration with your television, I mean with AYB, mm -hmm. you know, we have Saturdays. Every platform. Saturday, we are always there. We, we, are, we also use the peace platform right. to send the messages. So if people are ready to really, really, really comply, people are really, really ready to be peaceful, then they can be peaceful. But if they are not ready, then they cannot be ready. The only thing is, let's see how we can, you know, um, um, harvest those bad apples out of this system. Well, it's really do, do, is it about the bad apples or is it about the present state of affairs in the sense well, that yes. many peace experts have um, submitted to us that they are, it is very um, rare for peace to be consolidated in a state mm -hmm. that is being ravaged by abject poverty. And for us as a mission, this is monumental. So how then do we address some of those fundamentals 
that would help ease the tension, the aggravation. You know, many people are agitated in Sierra Leone simply because of the, 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 the state of affairs. And this is not just happening now. Yes, we've, yeah. And it's not just happening in Sierra Leone at the same yes. time. Because we've also seen other countries, people have taken to the streets, exactly, they've protested yeah. against some of these things. So what should be done to help you do your work as yes. a commission? Well, I think... Uh, what is key here, this is my observation, mm -hmm. it's still the social media. Mm. Those guys there, especially in the diaspora, sending all sorts of, you know, uh, messages, inciting those young people. Mm. If we can, you know, if the government or the people of Sierra Leone will be ready to say, no, we don't listen to them. Mm -hmm. This is already a plus point. If you look at August 10, up to August 10th, 8th, 9th, 10th, mm -hmm. the kind of uh, messages coming into Sierra Leone mm -hmm. from the diaspora, you know, was also a factor that led to this, to the mayhem, to the chaos, to the disaster we saw, which eventually became a disgrace to this country. Mm -hmm. And not only that, we also dropped, you know, I mean, uh, you know, one or two points, if you look at the, the peace the index. Peace index right. So this is where we have to start. Those out there, they should know that it's the one Sierra Leone they came from, you know, which we all belong to. And if they are sending hate messages because they want to make political capital gains, you know, or just even deliberately just destroy this, the peace, the 20 years peace we'll be enjoying, then of course, Samuel, it will be very difficult, no matter which commission, we, 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 no matter which institution or which government is there, mm -hmm. this problem will always be there. So mm -hmm. what we do is education. That's one key area to educate the people, you know, about the essence of peace. Mind you, that's how Rwanda started mm. in 94. Hate speeches and what have you. Mm. And it, had, it ended up with, I mean, with a massive genocide in that area. Mm. So what we say here is really everybody, father, mother, AYV, SLBC, and all and what have you, who should start really you know, working on this piece. Just like you said, it's fragile, but we can consolidate it. All right. But we with everybody on board. Quickly, so, Solomon, let, let, let me hear you. You know, you, you, you frowned at um, a newspaper um, crafting its headline that um, Amnesty International rubbish, reports rubbishes government's human rights records. Now, fundamentally human rights, um, fundamental human rights of people were, were violated clearly on, on August 10, especially the, the rights to life. I mean, people were, civilians were killed, police officers were killed, so their rights to life were definitely violated, clearly. And, and, and that's, that's a cause for alarm, that's a cause for concern. Many people look forward to us, I mean, improving our democratic credentials, upholding our human rights track records. So when you frown at things like that, and what the issues happening on ground are going against the spirit of consolidating a democracy, the spirit of upholding a human rights track records and all of that, then the, the tracks being laid are not good enough. How then do we address all of that, being an institution that advocates for human rights and see how you can protect those rights? From the angle of the media? Yes. No, generally. Well, again, uh, let's start with the media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. This is a wake-up call for the Independent Media Commission to ensure that uh, they do what I call media surveillance because some of these papers have started predicting the outcome of the election, and that's dangerous. Being the issues because of ABCD, we think this party is going to win because of this and that. That is party. done everywhere in the world. I know, but the danger there is mm. you, 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 it's everywhere. There, but you look, you look at the level of understanding of our people. Mm. If you continuously present to them a picture, that this party, because of this, 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 and they are mm -hmm. going to win, and at the end of the day, they don't win. It's going to undermine the peace. People will start interpreting that the election has been hijacked or I mean, stolen. Mm. This is what I'm saying, the type of messages, I mean, even the media, in terms of even discussions, how do you ensure that uh, you, 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 you balance the report? Mm. What we wanted the, the media to have done with the report was to really look at the issue of the violence. Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we control that? The police were targeted, and this is where some of us are coming from, mm. beyond every other thing. You, the six police officers were killed. And as I was saying, 
the military was equally involved in this. Mm -hmm. But people were appreciating the military than the police. How did the police die? So what's the level of the excessive force um, infused by the Syrian police? In fact, and this is where, again, uh, the Syrian police is missing the point because mm -hmm. I read from the articles <coughs> that uh, <laughs> we are not, we are not sympathizing mm -hmm. with the police officers that were killed and even their relatives. That is not the point. Somewhere you, you are in the media world. Mm -hmm. You look at... Uh, the standoffs between civilians and the police all over the world. At the end of the day, who, who, who is severely criticized? It's the police. This is because when you look at international human rights law, it is the state mm. that signs conventions and treaties on behalf of its, its people. And so the state has that obligation to respect, protect, mm. and fulfill human rights. So whosoever it's a state agent carries that responsibility as a state. That mm -hmm. is why all, anywhere in the world, as long as there's a standoff, like even Iran, mm -hmm. the issue of Iran, several police officers were killed and even citizens. But at the end of the day, it's the police officers that were criticized for being heavy handed. And this is the global practice. Again, what we are saying is that uh, we would have loved the police to do a, like, an independent investigation in terms of the cause of death of these police officers. How did they die? Would the police have come out with, 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 with a credible, with balance and a fair report? That's, that's, they are investigating their what? own type. They are undertaking their own investigation because at the end of the day, it's not about the civilians as such. If, if just the preliminary reports that were put out or, or, or press releases that were put out by the police, mm. I mean, it, it was just all about the police, nothing about the civilians. So, no, but if you about the police, would, would you have trusted a, 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 yeah, but if it, a if, credible report from the police? Yes, because if you about the police, what I wanted to know, because mm. we know that uh, the police were really key and that the focus really have been on the police to know how did they die. Because there are a lot of speculation going around. So, so, so this com comes back to Amnesty International, like Iman was saying. Mm. Would you not have spoken to them to have also understood their, mm. their, their, their own side, what's really led um, from, I mean, from their families, perhaps? The states they are in we, we, following those deaths. We interviewed the Inspector General of the Police and he gave us their own side of the story. Is, is it being captured? In yes, the it's, it's captured there mm -hmm. in terms of what he gave, but the response was a bit more skewed in terms of uh, uh, access to, to, to lawyers. Mm -hmm. But we, we interviewed him on the police mm -hmm. and he also gave us the, 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 the issue of really what happened. But again, who would have loved an in depth analysis of really what killed those six police officers? Did they die out of gunshot wounds or some other missiles, stones, sticks, what? Mm -hmm. It's all spe speculation. What really killed those six? We had some information that uh, some civilians had guns. How did they get those guns? Did they use those guns to kill the police? Mm -hmm. It's all speculation. So this is what we are saying. Perhaps the special committee will give us perhaps an in-depth analysis is done or something, because... W w w would Amnesty International, would you not have waited for that um, committee to have published its report? Look, I'm asking this question mm -hmm. because you look at, you take a good look at the situation, government is blaming opposition politicians for what, for what happened. Mm -hmm. Opposition politicians are blaming mm -hmm. government for what happened. And then Amnesty International is an independent body coming out with a statement that is also speculative, that is not conclusive, mm -hmm. that is based on testimonies of... The, the people who you feel witnessed, the people who you feel are victims because their um, loved ones were killed in the process. Mm -hmm. So I, I, is that not also just confusing no. and... It, it is not. Mm. Part, the, 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 the report from the special committee is going to either rubbish Amnesty's findings or even support what Amnesty has said. This is why we are waiting for that report. Mm. Because we definitely lose. Because we want to know the cause of death. I love the way, by the way, how you use the word rubbish amnesties internationally and you're criticizing the, the, the media's <laughs> headline. Go ahead. <laughs> no, because according to the, the government spokesman, he says the report is not even credible. So it's going to be rubbish. But what we are saying is that, uh, yeah. you know, the, 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 our report is like a trigger yeah. in terms of the fact that the uh, government is not going to perhaps, I hope, very shortly they're going to release that report. Mm -hmm. And let's see where the, the variance is in terms of our own report, in terms of our own findings, mm -hmm. and the special committee's findings, whether we agree or disagree. And that is where the argument... But where does this put us for the June pools? Because 
for, for, for many um, peace experts, I mean, it's becoming worrisome mm. with the item tensions, political tensions, politicians using the tribal cards, the re religious cards, the regional cards to, to just gain political power at the, at the detriment of Sierra Leone and Sierra Leoneans. I quite agree with you. I mean, to me, it's a worrying trend, and a, mm. especially with the August state. Mm. You know, we, we, we are speculating that uh, we really need to, to bring everybody on board mm -hmm. if we don't want to see a repeat of August or even something more serious than August 10. Because mm -hmm. of the way things are going, and you have said it rightly, the other day, one uh, uh, proposed candidate was talking about religious uh, uh, support. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you, you start seeing the utterances. Again, we, we, we appreciate PPRC. You know, they are really trying to do their job, but it's going to be very, very challenging in terms of how do really people uh, go about either canvassing or campaigning, I mean, in terms of really reading out there, what, what, what development agenda do you have for the country, different from what we are now seeing? That should be the, 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 the mantle of, or, of, or the mantra of some of these uh, politicians. That is what we want to see. But, I mean, we still see divisive utterances, and this is not good for our democracy. It's not good for, for, for the peace of this country. It's, it's worrying. It's a very worrisome situation, let me say the least. Mm. I, I, Imran, you know, I, I have listened to many speeches from um, the president mm. condemning violence, I'll try to say it, calling for peace, calling for a tranquil society, for a society that, I mean, is united and all of that. But from what is happening at the political front, it, it, from both the APC and the SLPP, their actions speak otherwise. So how do we get to the June pools, the June 24th pools, with a society that is enlightened enough to ensure that peace and peaceful elections would lead to credible fear and the the, the hearing of the voices of many Sierra Leoneans to the ballot box? Well, I think, uh, firstly, I, I suspect PPIC uh, have met political parties, uh, and uh, I, my understanding is there's a framework, there's mm -hmm. a template with all political parties mm -hmm. in terms of the way uh, they conduct business leading mm -hmm. up to the elections, a commitment to peace, uh, commitment to national cohesion, uh, making sure that uh, as political leaders in our, in our various uh, ways and mm -hmm. various communities, uh, we lead by example and not do anything that would sort of uh, uh, throw spanners. We all have a responsibility at the end of the day. The elections are only going to go one way, right? Someone will win and someone is not going to win. Mm -hmm. hmm? Uh, but <laughs> life goes on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so once we have that in mind, uh, you understand you, you, you have a responsibility to now come back as a political party mm. and craft your message. Yeah? Your message has got to be on the issues. What would you like people to, to hear? Mm? Uh, what are the issues you'd love to address if you've been given the opportunity at all levels? Yeah. Mm. And whatever those concerns are, lay it out in the form of a policy. Go out and explain to people. And I think once that is done, uh, we, we, we will be fine yeah, between now and the elections and even beyond. Now, if, if I can, there's another element also to it. Which is? Because in as much as we would like political parties right, to conduct business in the right and appropriate way, you're still going to have those who would choose to do otherwise. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And that is where the question of the law comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah? I expect the police and all other law enforcement agencies to be up to their game. Right? As we go, go into the elections, they should be bringing in their A game. Yeah? Making sure that anybody found wanting of anything unlawful or for stoking fire, right? not literally, Right, in communities, or disturbance, or chaos, that individual will be brought to book. Because only then mm. do you send the right message and the right signal that these elections are not going to be violent, right, and we would like to conduct it in a very peaceful way. How would government ensure, Imran, you know, you go 
back by um, to the follow-up report from the European mm. uh, Mission. It tells you that significant trust in um, the election management bodies, the judiciary, the police. I mean, if, 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 it's it's. It's, it's going down. It's going down significantly. And these bodies, especially the judiciary, the police, these are the sucker of hope, if we should put it. Mm. The, the judiciary is there to ensure that the remedy situation is in the law. Mm. But if these bodies have been accused as, um, as being used or, 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 or politically influenced by the state, and it operates well, the um, the politicians, you the politicians, mm. then how would the rule of law come into force in and in a manner that people do not get to see it as you being selective in the implementation and interpretation of the laws? So, I mean, firstly, let me say on the issue of uh, the police mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the fact that uh, there is low trust in, in the police force. Right. Uh, I, I, look, uh, I, I was reading a report and that... It has nothing to do with Sierra Leone. It's about the United States and their police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's at a very low point <laughs> from state to state. I mean, they have those issues. So right. I, I, I'm not saying it is something we should celebrate, mm -hmm. right? But if, uh, if for anything, uh, I think the Sierra police can take uh, uh, solace from the fact that they are not alone in terms of uh, having to live up to expectation, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same. When there's low trust in the police in the United Kingdom, in the way they relate to black people or people of color. I mean, it's the same for the United States. It's the same for any, any developed country, right? Mm -hmm. as, a, as to how they deal with black people or just generally, general policing. So there are challenges. But does it mean that uh, uh, we don't have those good moments, right? Mm -hmm. It's because all too often when something bad happens, right, or when it doesn't look too good, that is what comes to the fore. Right. Ultimately, the police have a responsibility, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they will take their responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. On the second part, which has to do with the judiciary, now let me just say, mm -hmm. mm, there has been a lot of accomplishments mm, with the judiciary in nearly five years of this administration, and that cannot be disputed at all. Right? It, it comes back to the initial question, mm -hmm. yeah? which has to do with human rights mm -hmm. yeah? and what we have accomplished in five years. In 2015, a survey was done as per how many judge do we have, uh, uh, given the number of citizens mm -hmm. we have in this country, which is about 7 million. Uh, the African average should be 1 to 33,000. Mm -hmm. In 2015, we were 145,000 to one judge. Yeah? And that tells you a lot as to why cases were left forever, unattended, and all the rest of it. You go to ordinary Mamikos cases, if you not take it on a UDP for four years. Uh, the record in 2020 is quite different, and that shows how much progress this government has made. So access to justice, I mean, in terms of its improvement, has moved from 30 to 70 percent. High court criminal sessions in places never heard of in Pujon, Tonkolili, Bonth, Cambia, Koinadugu, Kailau. Does, Kailan. does, does hmm? access guarantee justice? A total number, but it's part of it. It's mm. part of it. It's, 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 it's a process in itself. Mm. Ultimately, uh, I'm sure your, your question is suggesting in terms of well, what, what, what these conclusions are, what the rulings are, right? right. But you first of all need to be itself. able to have the access, yeah. right, before you get to this conclusion. <laughs> so, uh, a total of 800 cases were listed in 2020, of which 477 were completed, which is about 60% percentage-wise. And these wise. political cases, because you, you, no, you, no, 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 I no. mean, so, you get to talk so, about so, all of so these what, things. So what, when when, so when what? I'm coming, when the politicians, mm. when they are on the other side, mm. the judiciary, the police, they do not function because they are being captured by the ruling class. Mm. I mean, these accusations were there when APC was in power. Mm. They are still there now when SLPP is in power. Mm. So how do we get a system that works for the state? So at the end of the day, when the SLPP is in opposition, SLPP will be able to trust these state institutions that when things do not go right, they are able to take issues um, to the court, and they trust the court to do and deliver justice. So, 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 so the data and statistics that I'm giving you mm -hmm. uh, are ones that have been acknowledged even by mm -hmm. our international partners. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the judiciary has got support from uh, the United Kingdom, European Union, and all the rest of it in terms of uh, making sure that they scale. So these accomplishments mm -hmm. are accomplishments that they also recognize. Mm -hmm. EU. 
uh, defeat and all the rest of it, yeah? And, 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 and therefore, it shows that uh, it, it is not how it used to be in 2015 or 2014 or 2013. Mm. Uh, this Chief Justice is making deliberate and determined effort. I mean, I don't, I don't hold any brief for him. I shouldn't be saying this, but these are public information, they're public knowledge, right? It boils down to what, what the vision is of His Excellency the President. It's on human rights. It touches and concerns human rights. So on the issue of human rights, Samia, I don't know, in your living memory, when was the last time you had any government or a sitting president touting his accomplishments over a, one, uh, over a period of five years, or let's say 10 years, a two-term period? When was the last time? Never, ever. Hmm? Not since the formation of this state called Sierra Leone at Independence. Now, we have so many things to point to. In one term as a, uh, as a government, we can talk about access to justice, we can talk about gender, gender, the gender law. We can talk about the abolition of the death penalty. Interestingly enough, in the United States, they still have the death penalty in place in certain states. Right? We, we can talk about uh, the freedom of, I mean, uh, 1965 part five, and many more. Even if you want to talk about access to education, mm. right? That is also enshrined in the Constitution of Sierra Leone, 1991 right. Constitution of Sierra Leone. So we've done a lot when it comes Continue. to human rights Continue issues. Continue to stay with me, Imran. Um, there will come a time when we'll ask you to come and put your report card on the table. <laughs> That's not what we're discussing here tonight. <laughs> but allow me to run through some <laughs> messages quickly. Um, Jibril has to say, Samuel, I have big issue with you. Why do you want to dress the truth of, um, by saying that the president, um, he's saying he wants peace, blah, 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 when he's, not, when he's out there um, preaching hate. Okay? Francis T. Wycrum is saying, for any report that will be published, from any institutions now, it is a doctored one. We believe the report of Amnesty International and the U.S. Um, John Cano is saying, so what about Gentle's religious hate speech? Um, okay. Um, George Orwell is saying, Karim Kuron, the problem with this administration is the lack of communication to the citizens, my friend. Seven months down the line and nobody knows what is going on with such an important report. When innocent citizens were gone down and the cops, uh, corpses were not given to their um, families. Also, the U.S. State Department, the EU, have all released their reports about this same issue while the government um, kept quiet. Um, Samuel, you so biased and afraid to ask Imran that um, the President and First Lady are talking about peace but um, roaming around Sierra Leone preaching hate speech but trying to bring the opposition in the picture. Interesting. Ronald Bresford Ignatius George Tony said, When can many Sierra Leoneans remember a time Sierra Leone was economically prosperous? Most Sierra Leoneans have only experienced economic hardship in almost 62 years. When will that be a prosperous Sierra Leone for all? Oh, Saloon. Um, all right. Um, your port's not still functional. Interesting. Musa Kroma. Um, Saloon for, well, we say in this government promise us the citizens that they would come and do well with the economy. Now we're still hearing blame game. Jungle Alive is saying the people will stand up against all these politicians until they get it right one day. Mohamed Fona is saying this is sad coming from you, Imran, comparing the behavior of our police to the U.S. police. Uh, Paul Kanu is saying, like, seriously, Imran is civilizing and downplaying these gross human rights abuses by the government. This is absolutely terrible because on our direct relatives not involved, each and every single Salon post in life matters. Salon T. Usman is saying, one thing our politicians need to know is that one day Allah would judge them according to their works and ways. Musa Kroma is saying, no rights for citizens. It's a big, um, okay, I'm not going to go through that word. Um, Jibril Bangura is saying, until we get a credible opposition to put up a decent campaign to win over um, the hearts and minds of the people, the APC Tolongbo haters cannot win enough votes in order to get to state house, Mohammed. We're tired of these statistics. You look at statistics that favor you and um, want to put the ones that do not favor you under the carpet. I'm going to take at most um, five more messages because of time. We have so many of them. Ronald Judson is saying, when you have strong institutions, then you would have good governance. But when successive governments are in the habit of state capture, then this is what you get. Lawlessness and citizens taking the law into their hands. Do we have a neutral police force? 
We all know the answer to that. This guy, um, okay, I'm not going to go through that, I'm afraid. Mr. Presenter, um, Bond, do not, do not, uh, Bond does not have any police issue because Bond Town don't ever, okay, that's not too clear. And uh, I'm not sure any one of us mentioned Bond anyway. Thanks to social media now, it will help to force our leaders to do the needful as time goes on. For far too long, our African leaders have been keeping us in the dark and taking us for granted. Even if APC wins, if the government um, does not take the citizens seriously, their own would be worse than you. What is happening now in Senegal is a wake-up call. You can even see in the US, they uh, want to ban TikTok. Joseph Josiah is saying that. Samuel, you shouldn't re, um, read about, um, you should, you would not read about airports, not yet as pointed. Didn't you send your journalists at the airport yesterday? Well, the good thing you saw. <laughs> you saw the report yesterday, so it's a good thing. Thank you. Uh, Imran, this now Ramadan month to uh, please see, okay, I'm skipping that. Whether you like it or not, um, doctors, okay, we're not campaigning right now. Um, when the Electoral Commission declares campaign periods. I know um, the politicians and the political parties are, are doing what they had to. But let me quickly um, bring um, Solomon. Uh -huh. Now with this report out, and looking at the security and peace of Sierra Leone ahead of the June 24th polls, with this report, how imperative and urgent it is right now for government to come out with um, the committee report to to be able to to put into context where the nation went wrong where politicians went wrong where us the citizens went wrong that at the end of the day led to the loss of lives on august 10. yeah thank you very much i mean this is why in our press release we are really pushing for a speedy conclusion of uh, the work of the special committee so mm -hmm. that they will come out with a report with recommendations and all civil society will see how wrong along with those uh, recommendations because we know that uh, definitely it's like a pathway in terms of how do we really want to run the country in terms of uh, consolidating the peace because we continue to say that August 10 is a worrying trend it's a wake-up call that uh, things are not okay for the country, mm -hmm. that the peace is fragile. Again, uh, we want to even look at the relationship between the police and citizens. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not rosary. And uh, beyond criminality or criminals and the police, mm -hmm. but if you do a, 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 a public perce a perception survey in terms of the relationship between citizens and the police, mm -hmm. it's very, very low. Mm. He has said it perhaps even in other countries, but again, that's very worrying. Mm. We saw the way the police were attacked, six of them killed. I mean, and for some of them, they never had any weapon. Why were they killed? That sends a message that uh, all is not well between the citizens and the police. Yeah. How do we have a national conversation on that? I'm, go I'm, go I'm going to quickly, quickly hold you there, um, uh, um, Solomon Sobandi. Uh, just quickly, online, um, we've been joined by the um, National Publicity Secretary of the Opposition All People's Congress Party, um, Sidi Yaya Tunis. Um, Sidi, good evening and welcome to um, AYV on Sunday. Good evening, Samuel. Thanks for having me online. Um, we're discussing um, the state of security um, ahead of the June 24th polls. And, um, looking at um, peace and violence and already we've seen that the APC put out a statement following um, the um, aspirant for the SLPP's um, for the SLPP's mayoral seat in Freetown uh, Mohamed Gento Kamara what, what, what would the APC speak to in terms of peace in terms of security and uh, free and fair elections at this point Thank you very much, Samuel. Uh, I mean, we have always uh, stated our position and our commitment as far as it relates to making sure that we maintain peace, quiet, and national cohesion in this country. Several efforts have been made 
by the PPRC and the UNDP to ensure that we have cross-party dialogue focusing on um, peace and national cohesion and also having a sanitized uh, campaign period as we get closer to the general elections in June. And we have, uh, we have made commitments toward that, towards that and so far we have uh, lived up to our commitments. It is however disturbing that uh, we continue to see senior people, aspirants, officials of the Australian People's Party continue to make insightful statements, divisive statements that have the potential to not only create tribal and religious tensions, but to even cause chaos, chaos that uh, may probably be uncontrollable you know, along tribal and religious line. And the statements by Gentle uh, are the most offensive, most hateful, and most divisive statements I've heard from any aspiring candidate or even political party official uh, for many, many, many years in this country. I mean, we have had issues, you know, with tribal um, sentiments and tribal uh, statements, but to, you know, draw religion into it, something that we have enjoyed, the religious tolerance that we have enjoyed as a nation, you know, for, for as long as this country has existed. I mean, it is unfortunate, it is troubling, especially when it was done in the house of worship, in a masjid, in the month of Ramadan, on the very first Friday in the holy month of Ramadan, a time when we should all be reflecting and praying for our country and praying for unity. I mean, it is unimaginable. It is something that is not only worth condemnation from all religious leaders, political leaders, civil society, media, you know, but it is what having serious action taken because we cannot continue to condone such. City, City, let me ask this question. So what is being seen across the divide, be, be it red or be it SLPP, both parties, I mean, some members, very high-ranking members of these parties have been accused of what um, you are accusing Gentoo of. What would be the pathway to having... A, a, a national co um, a, a nation that speaks to peace, national cohesion, and tranquility as we head towards the June 24th polls. Because accusing gents of making tribal and religious rhetorics that threaten the peace, there, there, are, there are concerns also of me uh, against members of the APC who had done that, who people said had um, created so, so, some, some serious concerns around the peace. Mayor, I mean, former uh, mayor, have uh, mentioned that. So, how do we deal with all of these now? I mean, this is this is this is where I always talk about the insincerity on the part of even us, the citizenry. I mean, you have to look at the gravity of the statement. Um, the mayor said something about Buabis here, and we received condemnations from all over, from the Office of National Security, from the, the PPRC, from civil societies, and then we've had statements, even before gentle statements. We had statements from the First Lady, for example, telling people in the Eastern region not to allow APC to have offices in the East. We had statements from the President saying he cannot guarantee the security of every Sri Union because he does not have enough police and military, so he's left the security of the people in the East in their own hands. They have the right to protect themselves. We've had all of these statements, and we've not had any condemnation. And now, gentle statement, and people are trying to justify his statements by bringing in statements that have been made previously. Look, I've always emphasized it. As long as we continue to think that when it is done by a certain set of people, it is okay, and when it is done by another set, it is not okay, we are never going to be able to solve these problems. We have to treat these problems with the, with the, the, the seriousness they deserve, Samuel. We have the laws and the PPRC Act. The new acts are very clear as to, you know, the, the consequences that political parties are supposed to face when such hate speeches are made. And like I stated, the ONS and the PPRC have been calling us to 
to meetings repeatedly the past two weeks just to address these issues. So if we continue to see statements being still made by people in governance and by people aspiring to, to hold positions as serious as the mayor or position of this city, the capital of Freetown, and then we're trying to justify, oh, that somebody has made it before, so it's okay. I don't think we'll get to the bottom of it, and I think it will only continue to create more tension. And the danger is, Samuel, I have never, never in my entire life practicing politics, I have never had any politician bring religion into our politics in the way I had Jane to do. You know, so that, 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 that begs said. the question, CD. That begs the question. I mean, this gloomy picture you're painting of the statement of gentle, how worrisome and how, how threatening is it to the peace and tranquility of the nation? It is troubling. It is worrisome. We all know how, you know, dangerous religious tensions or religious uh, 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 crises can become to a point that you even you know trying to draw the issue of a jihad into you know somebody you know not supporting a muslim or you know and supporting a christian in our politics no 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 i mean that is over the top um samuel and we wholeheartedly condemn it and we hope we hope that uh, you know people will not try to justify this by making rhetorics and bringing in you know statements that have been made that are not even close to the kind of gravity that the, the statements of gentle really do have and i really hope uh, the institutions will treat this matter seriously because if they don't, then it makes no sense for them to continue calling political parties, you know, to have dialogue or to even discuss peace and national cohesion. Because then if the sincerity is lacking, what's the point of us continuing to have such conversation? Gener you know, generally, I mean, it, it is frustrating. Generally, CD, what does the APC make of um, the current state of affairs with regards security? I know the Office of National Security um, banned the use of marshals, which um, the APC, for example, had some, SLPP had, and, um, and the security is very paramount for every citizen of the state. So what does the APC make of security and the state of peace ahead of the June 24th polls? I mean, when you look at the chronology of events that have happened lately, from the tours of the president and his wife, and the statements that they are making, like, for example, we in the APC stopped having marshals the moment the PPRC and ONS said we should not have marshals. We stopped long since. Of course, we have protocol officers, but no marshals. And now that we have a situation wherein people are trying to bring religious divide, tribal divide, and we have a situation where the president is telling us on the campaign that he cannot guarantee us our security because he doesn't think he has enough military and police to be able to protect all of us and that we have the right to protect ourselves. How will that speak? to us not having marshals? How would I speak to us not putting our own security measures in place? But it, but is it, it, is it, it is, it is, it is, it is troubling, city, Samuel. I mean, this is, is coming it, from the president. City, isn't, that, isn't that been the complaint over time? That the police um, do not have the, 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 the human resource to police every Sierra Leonean. If, even, I mean, these were, were, were talks, these were propositions advanced even when the APC was in power. So why is this yeah, now a concern yeah, but, that but, but, um, the president Samuel, is saying the truth? Yeah, it, it is coming from the president. And in the end of that speech, you know what happened? They shouted, Kamajo Hoye, hmm. RUF Hoye. You have to understand that. Hmm. The undertone. So you have to look at the intent of the statements being made. So as somebody in opposition, your wife has said we should not be allowed to have offices in certain area because they think, you know, we are not supporting a certain tribe. And then you, my commander-in-chief, 
my president, the fountain of honor that is responsible for my security, saying you cannot guarantee me and that certain people have the right to protect themselves. And in the end, I hear people in your presence shouting Kamajo Oye, when we know we no longer have Kamajos in this country. How, how Come on, Samuel. Come how, on, Samuel. How committed is the APC to peace, um, Sidi? Samuel, we have always been committed to peace, and we have demonstrated that in this la in these five years of being in opposition. So many have happened to our party that uh, if we were not committed to peace, this country would have been in chaos over and over again. But throughout the harassments, the intimidations, the torture that we have faced as a political party, that our membership, our people in our party have faced, we have remained calm and we have kept our supporters calm. Even today, when we put out the press release on gentle statement, we called on the nation to remain calm, to be, to remain peaceful and to be law abiding. And that has always been our position. That these are the things that we have always called for, and we remain committed to that. But what we will not also do is to allow our membership, our supporters, and the people of this country to be coward into not taking part on the democratic process. We will not do that. We will not allow them to be intimidated. We will not allow them to be scared away from taking part in the democratic process. If the state cannot guarantee us our security will have to ensure we put our own security measures in place to keep us safe, our membership safe, and our supporters safe. That I can guarantee you. What, what, what would, Sidi, uh, um, before you, you, you leave us, would want you to, to, to send a message to your supporters, your sympathizers, people who are with the APC to remain peaceful and calm in, uh, I mean, as weird to the June pools? I am going beyond that. I'm speaking to this nation, those who love Sierra Leone, to know and understand that it is us who call for democracy. And our democracy is multi-party democracy, one that allows political parties to exist. And people, citizens who qualify under the Constitution, have the right to contest for any position that they qualify for. Let us not allow desperate politicians to divide us along tribal lines, to divide us along religious lines. We are the most religious, tolerant country in the world for which every other nation admires us for. We have intertribal relations, we have intertribal marriages, and even our settlements are intertribal. We have lived peacefully side by side along one another, getting along. So let us not allow desperate politicians who have no message of hope for us to divide us. For us in the APC, we will continue to call on this nation to remain calm and peaceful, to remain law-abiding, but to also be fearless in taking part in the democratic process. It is our right to support who we want to support, to support which political party we want to support, and to fully participate by voting in the leaders that we want to lead us. Let us not let anyone intimidate us into staying away. This country will go into a peaceful, free, fair, transparent elections and will ensure that the people of Sierra Leone elect the leaders that they want. Nothing and no one is going to stop that. Thank you. But we'll continue to call on our supporters and our membership to be law-abiding and we'll call on all religious leaders political leaders and civil society organizations to come out strongly and condemn the statements of Gento as well as statements made by any figure that uh, you know tend to divide us on tribal and religious lines. APC will remain committed to peace and national cohesion. Thank you very much, Sidi Yaya Tunis, National Publicity Secretary of the Opposition of People's Congress Party. Quickly, I'm going to allow Imran to respond to um, Sidi's comments. Well, uh, firstly, I haven't heard uh, those comments made by Gentle right. yet. Uh, so that is something I'm not going to comment on. But mm -hmm. I feel I was taken aback 
right when he referenced His Excellency the President, right on the issue of uh, uh, police forces not being able to police every single community, right? And somehow he has interpreted that to mean hmm, that it's going to be free for all, right? We know, just, I mean, I gave you the statistics about judges to citizens, yeah? The ideal figure is one to 33,000, mm -hmm. right? That's the, that's the African uh, baseline, right? In Europe, it's completely mm -hmm. different. So for the police, in terms of how much police do you need to police a certain community, we're still a long way to go as a nation anyway. That's just mm -hmm. the fact of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So His Excellency the President, right, if he were to say, look, we do not have enough police officers to police every single community, mm -hmm. That should be understood in the right context, full stop, right? It doesn't now mean it's going to be a free for all. We know that the police, right, will do their utmost to make sure that every community is safe. That is why we now have judges located in each and every single district. It is to make sure that we bring, right, people mm -hmm. to court, or you can take private summons and take people to court mm -hmm. and have matters redressed. Get into elections, we, always, we also know that there's always a possi possibility of a MACP, not so. Hmm? Mm. Which, I mean, based on uh, the security assessments and <laughs> threats and all the rest of it, uh, that can require, I mean, a different type of intervention. And so, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think this is an advice I have given to CD mm. and every single member in the national executive of the APC. Please come forward. Let us understand what your policies really are. Because as it is at every given moment, any opportunity you give to CD or anyone else in the APC, all they do is chase shadows. Hmm? It is one fear-mongering exercise to another fear-mongering exercise to something completely removed and not connected in any way to real and germane issues that people should be concerned about. They are just hoping that they can peddle enough fear into this society just enough so that they might be able to win a vote. Right, or win an election. That's not how politics work. It's about plans, it's about policies. What are the alternatives to the real issues that we are addressing as a government and that His Excellency the President has committed himself to, right, for the first five years and is looking forward to, I mean, when he gets a second term as President of the Republic of Sierra So, I mean, this has to be far more serious than CD is pretending it to be, mm. yeah? Let us come back to German issues, issues of national security, yeah, as we lead to the elections. Those commitments that uh, he's saying that uh, on behalf of his party that they have made and will continue to make to PPIC and other uh, 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 mm -hmm. security institutions as we put the elections. I mean, that's a commitment I can make mm, on behalf of my party, on behalf of the president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and on behalf of government, that we are committed in ensuring that we have a peaceful elections. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. And he, you know, it's interesting uh, when he was referring to Gento, he alluded to it's the first time an aspirant hmm, mm -hmm. is using a religious. You know, firstly, we need to be thankful as a country, yeah, that never in the history of this country have, do we have, I, I mean, have we been able, never in the history of this country mm -hmm. have we had reason, that's the exact word I was looking for, have we had reason to point to religious conflict and religious tension, right? We are a peaceful society. That is not who we are, I mean, as a nation, right? It might be for any other reason. It has never been about, <laughs> about religion. Mm. So I remember in 2018, I think it was Musa Tawali and his party, eh? mm -hmm. what was it called? Allies One, eh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clearly, so it is clearly not the first time. I'm not saying, assuming, right, uh, someone, for whatever reason, were to talk about religion, uh, is right, mm -hmm. right, because that's not, maybe that's not the way to go. Right? And, and, and I'm not sure whether anybody would deliberately seek to stoke religious tension, regardless of where you come from, right? And regardless of your party political persuasion. No one would seek to stoke right, religious tensions in this country. Mm. So let us keep things in perspective. Let us not over high palm. Yeah? Mm. Right. And let, we, let us do things in moderation. That would be my advice to City. Okay. I mean, he's a brother. Calm down, right? Let us come and talk about the real issues, issues of, about the economy, on infrastructure, on healthcare, on education, right? Because that is what people 
right, would be used to form an opinion as to who to vote for. And that is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. For the most part, 99.9% .9 of the time, we are here talking about issues. Mm -hmm. Let them get real. They don't have any issues to talk about, interestingly enough. Okay. Now that makes Dengujo defend. Now what you can call uh, Dragman Point. Yeah? From time to time, every time you call them, now Dragman Point, now Dengujo by now, take elections. All right. Let me bring in um, Solomon. Solomon, now we're, we're trying to, to round off the conversation. How do we lay the tracks that would lead to us having um, an election that would see every player... I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to have every player satisfied or be okay uh, in, in politics, especially during uh, periods like elections. But how do we ensure that the, the, the bodies set to look at all of the things, are, I mean, those bodies act independently and in the manner for which they were set up? Yes, I'm, I'm happy that you ended that way, that uh, those structures established and that should cut across. I mean, we have seen uh, issues like that, you know, from the PPRC. And to me, that's the way to go. We have seen how they have punished the APC for a breach. We have seen how they have written to the SFPP, mm -hmm. telling them that what some sections of the membership did was not in tune with uh, the way they, they, they it's against the, the policies of PPRC. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we want to see more of that in terms of compliance to really ensure that uh, mm -hmm. it goes across. Again, uh, we from the human rights angle, we are saying that uh, human rights or rights generally are never absolute. Every right goes with its co corresponding responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So people should learn to be law-abiding. I mean, to us, that's the watchword. world. Ensure that uh, we abide by the laws, we maintain the peace, because our rights are only guaranteed when there is peace. So that's how I will end my own uh, talk. Just maybe finally, this report of yours, where do you put it on, on the table? What description would you want to give to it? Well. The, the, the report is a wake-up call for us to know that uh, all is not well mm. and that uh, what happened on August 10 sent a message that we have not learned from history and we are repeating. Is that conclusive? It is, because the level of violence we saw sends out the message that uh, all is not well mm -hmm. and that uh, we want to see the security force, especially the police, to be more professional in the way they manage crisis moving forward. You know, it, the, the other day, it, it, it's a known fact that it takes two to tango. And if you just get my side and forget about the other side, it means it's, a bi it's, it, it, it's, it's bias in itself. And so how would we then, as citizens, who on a normal day look, uh, well, even us, the media, we look forward to institutions like Amnesty, other institu um, independent and credible institutions when they put out things, for us it's food on the table. So whether it's delicious or not depends on the findings. So you leave, the, the report leaves many rooms for doubt and all of that because people think, oh, it's one-sided already. How do we then feed from this, uh, um, Solomon? So just, I mean, for the purpose of credibility and putting, looking at Amnesty's reputation, is this something you would want to revisit? Well, not really revisiting. The point is, we are, we are missing the point. Go ahead. Look at the substance of the report, mm. the issues raised. Mm. Okay, you can say by it's who? not... Don't, not eh? talk, not by talk about substance now. By, by, <laughs> by the affected people, mm. those concerned. Right. One, we outrightly condemn the violence and the killings. Yes. That forms the basis. Mm -hmm. Two, the nature of the way the violence took place. Right. It's a cause for concern. The police, the way they handle the thing, is a cause for concern. So there are a series of issues, even body on the, the, the special committee. So you see that these are like wake up calls for us to know. Mm -hmm. Now we are happy that uh, from you mm -hmm. that the report has been finalized and submitted to that's fine. 
this is what the report is the, the, the report is pushing for. We want mm. to see action. And so if we have a report from the special committee, fine. Mm. Perhaps it is going to address some of the issues raised in, in, in the amnesty report. Can I, can I just say very quickly, Samuel, mm. uh, I would be the first person to, to come to the rescue of Amnesty Inter International, right? And um. that is what I'm going to do. Mm. Uh, I remember back uh, on the 18th of August, that, that was a student's demonstration way back in 1997, mm. right? I was one of those students who were arrested and detained because we demonstrated against AFRC at the time. Mm -hmm. mm? And we all know the story, the rest is history. Mm. Uh, I was not alone, Suleiman Banja, Tijansi, and many others, right? Uh, Amnesty International captured it, right, rightly so, and uh, uh, that helped, right, for us to be released at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So here's my point, Samuel. Uh, we all have bad days at the office, yeah? Even you, in the job that you do, right? Mm. You come to work someday and your, your job is to actually interview people. Mm. But sometimes you leave, right, just the mental side to you mm. gives you a feel that this was not one of one of my best performance mm -hmm. yeah and you go back looking it does not mean it does not mean some is not a bad person mm. or not sabine woke mm. right so this for me is one of those moments yeah they got this one wrong i mean this is a howler very tardy let us accept it and move on amnesty international that i know with its head office somewhere mm -hmm. in the world right have a very reputable Right? They're a very reputable institution mm -hmm. and, you know, people rely on them the world over to capture issues and bring them to the fore. And that's how it's going to remain. On this one, let us not dwell on it for too much, for too long, because it could have been better. Right? That's just, I mean, the fact of it. But Lord Lefa, it don't okay. do, it don't do. All right. Uh, uh, let us look forward. I'm sure mm. Mm, there's also, I mean, for every report that goes out, for every work that they do, Right, they have those uh, internal mechanisms and structures. They would go back and say, mm -hmm. what can we do to make things better? And this definitely would be uh, a, a, a learning exercise for them, mm -hmm. right, as to how to make sure other reports do not fall under similar criticisms. I see okay. Solomon but they're a brilliant yes. organization, 100%. Uh, you know, let us, let us have it. Or let, let, me, let me correct this. Yeah. This is not really a report. It's a press release. Mm, okay. okay. It's different from a report. Mm. Okay. This is just to capture the issue quickly and perhaps raise it. Mm. A report is in depth, like the, the, the annual report where we'll be launching uh, on Tuesday. You read that and you see the, is the issues mm. captured. Mm. So when you see the, the okay. truth, then you know what we are really talking about. But, 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 but by the way, by the, way the, 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 the work of the committee is done. I can also confirm, like you said, uh, that is going to be made public, right? Wonderful. And uh, it is very thorough and detailed. Oh, can I get a copy? Uh, we did not want to. Well, the, not we. The committee did not want to come under the same criticism like we're experiencing with Amnesty International. Uh -huh. They did what you would call a deep dive, uh -huh. yeah? uh, not on the surface. Right? So you're going to get a very bulky, voluminous report uh -huh. that's going to come out and be made public, and then we'll all have the opportunity to understand exactly what happened and what are, what are the recommendations. Can you promise me a copy? Philip. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'll bring it to you. I'm office. sure it will be out. <laughs> sure. I'll bring it to you. Well, well, Philip, let me ask you what are the mechanisms currently in place to prevent conflict as we head to the June 24th polls? Well, uh, with regards to um, what we have on the table right now is the election preparedness action plan. Right. We've been, we have an in depth um, um, action plan for that. And uh, that's what we are working on. That is towards. Um, um, June 2024 and even beyond. Mm. I mean, we are planning to set up a situation room, which is not only going towards, I mean, as election comes, but even after. Mm. That is a permanent structure. So we are working on that. And that will lead to the training of, um, you know, various stakeholders, um, peace monitors, the commissioners have, has now have peace monitors all, all, all over the country, you know, who can be, who is who, are, who will be there to monitor you know the situation uh, they will have this double function not only to monitor but also to speak the message and um, we also as a commission intend to engage political party representatives um, we also intend to engage parliamentarians as elections approach so there is a lot actually a package of um, activities going on in this area and the executive secretary is actually 
always uh, engage in those uh, institutions like PPRC, I was just going to ask, um, yes. your job now, in order for you to achieve your mandate, you yeah. have to be very collaborative exactly. and coordinate with other institutions. Yes. Um, so how is what, that effort? Yes. What we are doing, to? actually, we already signed MOUs, Memorandum of, of, of Understanding, long ago mm -hmm. with the various institutions such as uh, ECSL, such as uh, PPRC. Uh, we believe we cannot work in isolation. It's only when we really uh, collaborate our efforts that we can really uh, work on, it will promote peace. Mm -hmm. I mean, mind you, peace cannot be manufactured in a factory. Mm. It is human beings who have to come together, who must be ready, who are ready, who should be ready, mm -hmm. you know, to say, well, we want to work on peace. And this brings me exactly to the point, you know, after hearing those, um, uh, you know, the two colleagues. Um, the politicians. Yes, the politicians, <laughs> uh, Sila and uh, uh, Sidi, that um, I'm also personally optimistic that um, with all the fears we are now having, that this will come and pass. That is, um, the euphoria will come. Mm -hmm. We saw it in 1968, 67, 68. We saw it in 73. We saw it in 77 you know, until I left this country in 82, you know, and starting from 96, we saw developments there. So I want to believe, of course, the tensions are high now, but um, the people in the end would want to maintain the peace. They wouldn't like to go back to the 1990s, neither the North, nor the South, nor East, nor West, yeah? But of course, some effort is needed especially especially from the politicians and that is why i'm happy this evening to hear even from tunis their commitment you know his the, the commitment of his party mm -hmm. or to hear from sila the commitment of his party you know when it comes to you know um working on how the election you mm -hmm. know process should go yeah so i want to believe um it will it's a process it needs some time and even this election i mean politics here mm -hmm. Uh, based on what I experienced elsewhere, it, 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 it will take some time until we really get there where the, what, I mean, there where the West is expecting us because we re usually dance to their tune. What our advice here is we should try to Africanize our own politics. I mean, we are going at a level where a majority of the people are not educated enough to understand what is, what is going on. So, it will take some time, and I want to believe even with the agento has committed himself into making sure that his, uh, his deputy is going to be a Christian that he would appoint. So I hope this puts to rest all of the gibberish that Sidi was saying a short while ago, right? Because right. otherwise he would not, he'd not be saying and committing himself into getting a Christian as his deputy mayor. Now, now let, me, uh, let, let me just say... Quickly, a minute of uh, message, Yeah, just peace, very quickly. Peace that uh, I, I think uh, this government under the leadership of His Excellency the President, Ritar Brigadier Julius Madabio, we take our human rights record very seriously because issues raised right in the Amnesty report and uh, the, the U.S. report, press release, well, there's a report to it, press release and, and, and another EU report uh, talks about human rights issues. Mm -hmm. And this is the first administration since the independence of this nation called Sierra Leone that has passed so many progressive laws, right? Civil liberties, gender, <laughs> gender, gender, gender law, mm? access to education for pregnant girls, right to education for, for, mm. for kids generally, and many others, death penalty, uh, uh, criminal libel, and all the rest of it. We have done so much in five years, uh, and we're not doing it to meet uh, international benchmarks, yeah? Uh, it is just a byproduct. That right. is why we continue to meet those international Let's benchmarks. have a message of We're peace. We're doing it because that is where we want to be for a 21st century. Let's have Australia. a message of peace quickly, oh, a few seconds. But you cannot talk about peace and not talk about human rights at the same time. We do not and have so time. My point is, my point is we'll continue to do more of this, mm. right? But then also, like I have said, commit ourselves ultimately because if uh, the obsession is what is going to happen between now and the elections, uh, that's a commitment we, we would make, right? That it's going to be peaceful, yeah? And we'll make sure we conduct and carry ourselves in the way and manner that it ought to be, right? But lasting peace, lasting peace, Samuel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has a lot to do with the laws we are passing on human rights, making sure 
that we have a free space and a free society and we'll do more of those laws in the second term of His Excellency the President. Thank you very much, Imran. Um, Sila from the Ministry of Information and Communications. Thank you very much, Solomon Sukbandi from Amnesty International and Philip Bona from the Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion. And uh, many of you are viewers, I mean, following us on uh, social media. You're asking us to play the, the video or videos of um, tribal rhetorics or religious rhetorics. We would never amplify those voices. So please, you would never get them on our screen or on our radio because we would not amplify those voices. The voices we are amplifying are voices of peace, voices that um, bring us together, and um, voices that put us as a nation, as a united front. Yeah? But many thanks to all of you for being part of the conversation here tonight. Um, the show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samuel Weiss Bangura. And until we meet again next um, week, take care of yourself and have a lovely night. Up next is our AYV Primetime News. Until then, bye-bye.